Good morning, everybody. How are you? It is Wednesday, October 26th, um, days away from Halloween. I love I loved that cartoon. I, I have to tell you, I saw some things. Well, first, let me say what we're doing today. I'm sorry. We will do when weirdo shapes don't line up. And I am very excited about this because I think if you're fairly new to quilting, this could be a little illuminating for you. And if you've been around the pool hall for any length of time, yeah, there might be some gentle reminders in there. Well, okay, so this morning I got sucked into the vortex of the internet. I don't know if that ever happens to you. What happened was I saw this adorable Halloween costume where it was a mom and a dad and they were graham crackers. I mean, how easy is that? Just cardboard front, cardboard back, dot, 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 dot. The baby was a marshmallow, just white stuffed up. And then the toddler was a Hershey bar. <laughs> Super cute. And then I thought I should be cut and copying these things. So I went and looked for them and then I couldn't find it. But I don't know if you know, my daughter is a librarian. She started as an eighth grade school teacher, then went to high school librarian, and now has moved locally to that librarian. And I just almost died at this picture. This is the book fairy. That, that like the cutest thing on the face of the earth. And uh, Dare said, well, I think that would be hard to do. And I'm thinking, I don't think it would be hard to do at all. So there's your book fairy. And then I started looking for Halloween costumes that relate to us and that are super easy. So I, this one I thought was great given all the garbage with our website. <laughs> I just love it. Just love it. Okay. So, but wait, wait, there's more. Oh my gosh. Look at this one. <laughs> super quilter. <laughs> I cracked myself up. <laughs> okay, Yvonne, it's a quilt. And then do <laughs> And I think the part that makes it so funny is the generic costumes that you can make. Silver I hope you think that's funny too. Oh my god. God, goodness gracious. Okay. Then in getting pulled into the vortex of the internet, Facebook, I don't know this person, but Toby had this leaf on it. This is a real leaf, people. I think it is spectacular. And it just goes to show when you're walking... <laughs> <laughs> Three seconds can change the world. Watch the ground and maybe you'll find something like that. This is spectacular. And I have no idea what the variety is. I actually, I should take a picture and ask Alden Lane. Okay. Then I like this. Trina is working on her baskets in on her new Bernina. This is the Cafe Bernina, okay? And the things that I, she's also using, of course, I don't have my notes with me, uh, Bernie and Shelly Tobish's technique of appliquing down the handles. It is different than mine, but uh, Shelly has a wonderful way to do it that also essentially it can pass for hand applique. It's Shelly Tobish. If you put that in the search line, I'm pretty, and under learn, I'm pretty darn sure that will come up. She does some things with the settings and stuff that are truly pretty brilliant. Okay, then here is, oh, there's Trina, I'm sorry. Okay, then this one is Lori's, and she has all the baskets done, and then she has, no, all the handles done, and then she has to do the baskets, and then something like her water heater went out or something wonderful. Um, speaking of water heaters going out, out at work, there was a trauma with plumbing in the entire complex. So I know when, I, actually I was going to go out there today and we were going to do my favorite things. I think I'll go on Monday. <laughs> And apparently our place was ground zero, but it seems to be fixed. Okay, then this is Lynn. Congratulations, congratulations, yet another ribbon. This makes me so happy. Uh, but at the same show, I don't have my notes, and the, the show was not in the United States, okay? Um, look at this one. 
This is a silk tie quilt. Yep, silk tie. There we go. And Jan is the maker. Let me get a close-up of that. And one of the things it said in the description was, you know, she had to deal with different kinds of silks, different uh, silks that behave differently, etc. When we go, when we go and do our silk tie quilt, we will be doing it starting in January. We'll probably launch the block of the month and then do that. But I'm really looking forward to this because I am not going to tell you what you need to make out of it. I'm going to just tell you what you need to do and then we can do incredible show and tell and completely um, enjoy what we're doing. All right. There's that. And then this. Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. No, I got that. Okay. Okay, this was sent to me by Jean. <clears throat> this is made from ties, from silk, from ties, okay? I, I'm going to tell you the artist's name in a few minutes so you can Google her. And I, I honestly, at first I thought Jean was just showing me ties that maybe had this printed on it. No, no. This artist is doing this. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Here's another one. I don't get it. So <clears throat> here is the name of the artist, uh, Justin Warner artist. If you Google Justine, not Justin, Justine, if you Google it, you will go to her site and doggone it that it, she is all about upcycling, using things from our past, etc. And man, it is all there. I, I still... I don't want to say anybody's pants are on fire, but I don't know how that was made. And if you tend to go down that road, we're all going to stand by and cheer, but don't ask me for help on the traditional one, okay? <laughs> so, all right. Um, what I'm going to be sharing today are when weirdo shapes don't line up. This is um, my second book. It's out of print, but it is in here, all right? Uh, the illustration and stuff like that. However, most of you have this because of our CAFE um, mystery quilt. I really encourage you to get this. And right near the back, and it's from pulled from my Simply Stars, are when weirdo shapes don't line up. And what we're going to concentrate on are down to here today. All right? And the tricks and tips. It is on page 124. If you don't have this book, I'm going to encourage you to get it, uh, just to have it in your library. Also, it may come in handy when you're doing your silk ties. What I love about it, and oh boy, I hope we have them in the store. If not, we'll get them. Um, it will take like a, a block and, okay, like let's say Jacob's Ladder here, okay? And then you can see right up here, it tells you the different size blocks you're going to make and then what to cut what at what size. So it's a, I mean, I can drop this stuff out. I can figure it out, but man, this is a super duper easy reference. I think it's brilliant. And um, the, there's a first edition that I'm not sure what's in it, but for sure the second edition um, does have one weirdo shapes don't line up, but they call it corner alignment for piecing shapes when weirdo shapes don't line up. Yeah, this is a great book and it's like 18 bucks. Um, well, look, I go to this all the time, all right? So let's start with what we have been, what I've been pounding the table over when we were doing the baskets, okay? And I'm gonna just repeat this here so that we have this all in one place, all right? Let's go down here. So here is our first little unit right here. And I've got to sew this to this. This does not fit. It's too big. But no, it's really not. What you want is you want to exactly align this. And you guys, this is no matter what you're doing, when you're doing whatever. This is like adding a seven eighths when you're just figuring out what to cut things, like when you're doing a half square triangle. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna line this up, all right? If you want, you can glue stick it. I'm gonna go grab my glue stick, I kinda do. All right, oh 
my gosh, I cannot get over Super Quilter. I cannot get over that. And then there was a quilt on the front door, right? Okay, so remember the other day when I said, okay, I'm going to sew here. I want to look on this side. I only want to see purple. When I look on this side, I only want to see this color. So, and remember, that's how I found out that it was cut wrong too. But this is how you want it to look. I'm going to go sew it. You don't need to watch me sew. I do want to re, um, reiterate that I have my sink. I'm on a Bernina 165. Oh, shoot, ma'am. There we go. My, my thing. 165. I have a single whole throat plate. Now, if you were on that cape one, that I just showed, you wouldn't need a single whole throat plate. Well, I don't know. I shouldn't just say that. I don't know. If you have extra white feed dogs, you want a single whole throat plate, period. Okay. So, seven, what did I say? Me? I'm on a 765. That was my producer, Gilman, just told me. <laughs> all right. Now, as we've been discussing, biases are your enemy. All right. So, I can set the scene just by going like this and then putting a clapper on it of some sort and then press it. You want a hard pressing surface when you are doing piecing. If you have a squishy piecing surface, there's a darn good chance that you're gonna end up stretching the bias. So in this case, feels like it wants to go this way. And oh, here's the other thing. I suppose we could say this is the light and this is the dark. But it doesn't matter because when I press over at this to this, it goes it, it goes light against light. So I'm not I'm not worried about it. P, how you press seams has to do with ease of construction. Note how I'm staying away from that completely. All right. So that's weirdo shape number one. And yes, we've talked about that ad nauseum. And for that, I apologize, but I want to keep it all in one unit. All right. Here's another weirdo shape that doesn't line up. I have to tell you, I uh, measured 10,000 times and cut once. Let's just still see if I got it right. <laughs> all right. Okay, these are, these, are, these are too big. They don't fit, all right? So what you can do, and I may have a little, let me little, grab a little pen, okay? What I want is I want ink equal wings on each side, all right? But another thing you can do is you can press it with your little finger. I might want to put a little dot there to find the center. And then this one, you can press it. Let me show you something cool. Maybe I'll put a little dot on it. But when I, pr I what I've done is I've made a crease that this crease will nestle right into. All right. So I've got equal wings on each side. Again, I think I'm going to just dump in a little bit of glue stick. Okay, there. There. Okay, and now I'm going to check on this side to make sure I only see purple. Check on this side to see I only see blue. Okay, so let me go take a little sew. All right. And what I would do, here we go. What I would do, I'll tell you this is why I love my thread cutter. Um, actually, probably what I would do here before I go to my machine is I, I might well prepare both sides at the same time because this I, there's no reason I couldn't sew this and then come over and sew this all right so let's do this again let's find the center in other words you do opposites first whoops okay uh, and I'm gonna go like this and then it's just gonna nestle right in there I love that trick. I can't even remember who I learned that from. I can't even remember. The cool thing about this weirdo shape is once it's sewn, you don't have to worry about um, stretching everything because all the outside's going to be on the straight of grain. So here we go. Oh, 
All right. I'll tell you what's going on this weekend. It's pretty funny. Okay. Not Houston, unfortunately. But we're doing something fun. Okay, so here we go. This is going to want to press this way. This is going to want to press this way. Oh, let me set the seams. It's so funny. I never used to do that. But after I hung out with Marianne Bonds, I was um, convinced that's the thing to do. Now, again, straight of grain, straight of grain. Oh, no, it's not. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Whoa. It's, I thought it had square triangles. Well, in the perfect world, this will be straight of grain. For some reason, I cut this sucker on the bias, which is really stupid. Because look at how am I supposed to get into here? Why did I cut these at quarter square triangles? I don't know. Because theoretically, this should be half square triangle, straight of grain, come out here, straight of grain. I don't even know why I told you that because you wouldn't be able to tell the difference if I didn't tell you that. <laughs> oh, wait. Be nice if my camera was on it. Oh, sorry, man. Um, this, these should be half square triangles, right? Straight of grain, straight of grain, straight of grain, straight of grain. Mm -mm. For some reason, I cut it as a quarter square. And on the stupid meter, that's 150 out of 10. All right. And then you just do the same thing here. And that's this weirdo shape that doesn't line up. Okay. Ha ha, you know this stuff. Okay, here's another weirdo shape that doesn't line up. Look, there's 10,000 ways to do flying geese. I know that, I know that, I know that. But when I taught my stars class, okay, this one is up, perfect. Um, this is a quarter square triangle. Ch -ch -ch Boom, boom, that's this. So this is all on the bias. This is all on the bias. This is a true half square triangle, square, cut, straight of grain, straight of grain. All righty. There. Oh, weirdo shape doesn't line up. What you're going to do is you're going to line up this outside point and let this part be weird up here. I never used to use a glue stick, I will tell you, and I just love it. Okay, now, let's line this up. Many times this get, this piece gets shifted, so I'm going to turn over and look. Oh, it looks good to me. As I go to my sewing machine now, I am going to be sewing on two biases. So you don't pull, you don't stretch, anything like that. So let's just... Go down here and sew that. I can't unsee that super quilter. I can't unsee that that image in my mind. <laughs> I'm having a hard time <laughs> seeing that. All right. So now this I know is on the bias. That is the one exposed bias. I had somebody write me and say, you know, she's heard about bias and blah, 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 but what's the big deal? It's a huge deal. And fortunately, through my hammering and, you know, going on and on about this, um, the message is getting out there. So this is how it's going to want to go. This is bias. Come up, come off. See, if, if this ironing surface were squishy, when I come up and off... It could easily distort up here by going down into the squishiness of the ironing surface. So I'm going to line this up. And there's going to be a way to check to make sure you're A-OK. -okay. Hold on here. There and there. Kind of excited. I get to go out with Jennifer Sampu and Pokey tonight. And we're going to go get sushi. So here's this. I love those ladies. Here's this. Now I'm going to just go sew that. Here we go. Um, you know, I don't care what high-end machine you buy. There's uh, many different brands out there and stuff. But it's really important that you go to the dealer and take the lessons. Because most of them have... 
hidden little miracles within them that you probably aren't even aware of. Okay. So this is all straight of gray now, so I can iron like a maniac. And I know this is correct because this is a quarter inch from the et. Sorry. I can now iron like a maniac. Um, this is a little bit bigger, but I'm not going to worry about it. I can trim this now because I know that this is a quarter inch from the edge. All right? So I can trim the bunny ears off. But I never trim the bunny ears off until I know it's correct. Okay, here's... Oh, no, I'm going to do this one next. Okay, I call this the little Christmas tree block. All right? Um, I, it's, uh, its real name is isosceles triangle and a square, but then if you wanted to make a little stump here, it's cute as can be. Honestly, at this point, I probably would foundation paper piece this. But when I taught my star class, I made you suffer through the old-fashioned way. This is a weird shape, okay? Period. Now, I want you to think of a Christmas tree. Back to that again. Where do you hang the star? Where do you put the star? You put the star at the top, okay? So that is exactly what I want to line up, is the top, okay? I want, and isn't that weird looking? So flippin' weird, okay? And I'm also going to be, I'm also going to be sewing two biases. This shape gets weird, all right? Okay, that looks good to me. I'll be right back. All right. And I actually called Laura Downs about this, and I said, look, is this just a weird shape no matter how you slice it? And she said, yes. I asked her that a long time ago. Whereas if you're foundation paper piecing, it will come out perfectly. All right. So here we have this. All right. And I know that this is on the bias right here. If I want to set it, okay, fine, but stay away from that. I am going to press to the purple. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go off. Do not touch that. Now, let's go back to that Christmas tree bit. I want to line this up to the tippy tippy top of the tree. So that's going to be right up there and this is going to be right down here. Okay, again, I'm going to do a little plucking of the glue stick. And uh, the reason I wouldn't pin is because if I were to pin this, it um, you got a chance of stretching things. And why am I even bothering with the glue stick is because sometimes things can get tucked under, underneath, and that's a big bummer. So let me go back and sew this. This one, somebody asked the other day, do I ever square up? Well, this, I don't exactly square up, but let me show you what I do look for. I got to grab a ruler. There we go. Okay, let's see what we have going on here. And I could show you the weirdoness of this. Wow, this one looks pretty good. Now, oh, I can now press it all over the joint because everything on the outside is straight right. So let's just see what this measures here. Okay, it is getting, it's bowing a little bit right there. You can see that. And this is going to measure... Um, two and a half by two and a half. That's just the random shape I decided to do. The main thing I want is to make sure this is a quarter inch from the edge. So, again, I rarely do this, guys. I'm going to put this on two and a half. Okay, now that makes it less than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to just take this at a quarter of an inch and trim that off, ignore everything else. Just ignore everything else. Quarter inch to the outside edge. All right. Now here's, here's the sneaky one right here. This is super sneaky. 
because these shapes do line up. Look, they line up. Okay? But aha, uh -huh, you don't want to sew it that way. I think this is the sneakiest shape of all. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to you're going to have to eyeball this. I want about a I want it a quarter my little bunny ear to be at a quarter inch. So when I start stitching, I want this to be exactly at the quarter inch. Okay. And the same thing down here. So I'm going to kind of center it a little bit. And there's, there's nothing that I can fold and do whatever with to line it up. Because if I fold and I fold here, it's going to go, it's going to go back to them exactly lining up. And you don't want that. It's an, it's an offset thing. Very, very, very deceptive, this particular shape. It's the sneakiest of all. Oh, and I put the glue out there. How's that going to help me? By the way, this stuff washes out. And it dries clear. So I'm going to put this here. Uh -uh. This down there. Okay. I'll be right back. Here we go. Again, I'm sewing bias to bias, so don't pull, don't push. Just let it naturally go in. That's one of the things I love about the dual feed. Okay, let's see what we've got going on now. This is going to be a little tricky to press. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we have going on here? We've got a bias here. We have a bias here. So I think what I'm going to do is I, this is straight a grain, I'm going to just get up in here and I'm going to stay away from this and I'm going to stay away from this. Then this one, same thing. I'm going to kind of go like this, a little bit of eyeballing is going on here. You can see that these bunny ears are going to be the same. Yay. Okay. I remember the first time I did this shape, I was so disappointed because I was like, what, 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 what's going on here? Okay, back to sew. This is the king or queen of trickiness. Oh, you know what? I think that super quilter lady needs to put a bunch of threads hanging off her body. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> All right. So, oh, good. This is on the straight of grain. This is on the straight of grain. Bias, bias. So, I'm going to choose to come around and get out of there. Press this way. Staying away from this. And I'm staying away from that. And I know it's correct if there's a quarter inch. And there is. So um, in quilt making, there's so many little minutiae like that. And uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. I, to me, these are the most simplest shades, shapes, shades, shapes that I use. And um, there you go. Okay, and i got to tell you something in a moment. But I see... Um, no, you, uh, Roxanne, I'm sorry. It's only for a new machine. I'm so sorry. But I will tell you this, that a used Bernina, you should have no fears of buying. And often when you go to your dealer, they will can even tell you who owned it, how many stitches are on it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's only for new. So let me scroll back. I never get tired of repeats. It's always, that's what John said. I said, man, you know, and he said, Alex, he's all into golf. Well, not for six months because of his surgery. Um, He's, he said, I, I'll watch the same thing over and over and over, and then hopefully it will penetrate and, you know, resonate. All right. Okay. Huh. Diane says, John, I want you to hear this, that uh, she can't get me on Facebook anymore. YouTube can't get sound. How weird. Yes, Sherry, this is, this is Doreen Speckman's. Ode to the late Doreen Speckman, Peaky and Spike. Yeah. Okay, so we're going down to the wedding. 
And we'll be uh, going down uh, in the morning, Friday morning. We've got people here to stay and take care of Heidi. So that's great. But one of the things that kids did <laughs> for the reception is that on your RSVP, you have to put, if they play this song, you will get up and dance. So the song I love is Love Shack <laughs> by the B-20s or whatever. So John came in yesterday and goes, that song is four to five minutes long. And so I'm like, okay, okay, we don't dance, okay? Oh, but we are. And what we're going to do, I hope I can get my kids involved. Uh, Aunt Judy, if you're on this, just stop. Just, um, in, or if you are on it and you want to join us, or Jim and Kathy, we're going to get up and dance and and try and draw the people to come in and dance with us with the stupidest, stupidest routine on the face of the earth. <laughs> stupidest, all right? Um, we are currently working on the warehouse sale and getting it so we're going to be able to do sign-ups. Stay tuned for that. I don't want to do it too far out. Again, it's the um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday before Thanksgiving and because this place is so small we're gonna ha it's gonna have to be a little uh, regulated on when you can go in when you can go out and all that so we found a place for people to park so it's not we don't have to worry about clogging up the parking lot that was one of our concerns um, also then okay so Friday I won't be here Monday we're going to work on the broken dishes which are the setting squares that are between the baskets that's what we're gonna work on and I'm going to give you a sneaky peeky of next year's BOM. Yep, I am. And pretty soon we're going to do the whole reveal. I'm very, very excited about it. Okay, um, B-52s, yes. I don't have dual feet, so I always use my walking foot. I usually leave my walking foot on. Okay, uh, Kathy, if that works for you, great. My problem is, is that I, I'm so used to the 37 foot that I, I don't think I could make that mental adjustment with my walking foot, which probably means you're shifting your needle to the right and all that. No problem. Do what works for you. That's, that's the beauty of this whole game is that there's so many things you can do and you just have to find out what, what shoe fits for you. What You might like this brand, but I like might like this brand. Like jeans, like bathing suits. I don't like any brand. Okay. So. Oh, yes. Okay. I don't know that we're showing it next week. I don't know if John put that up or Kristen put that up. Kristen's in charge of that. But I'm very happy to have it in our hands. Very, very happy. Oh, so, well, Okay. So again, what we're going to do is this, is we're going to do stitching in December and start the tie quilt in January. I've gone maverick on my, on, on, my, on my pattern, and we will have this pattern available. I have gone maverick. I was just going to do um, outline stitching, and then I went crazy. I, I, I couldn't stand it. I had to do more. So... Uh, here's what I've been working on. Originally, I was going to just do like this in here, you know, outline and call it a day. And then I started adding this, and then I started adding this, and I'm having a flipping ball. Absolute ball. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but um, I don't know. I, this is, you get a good Christmas Hallmark movie on in your set for hours. Let's just put it that way. Like I added in here. In here we will have these panels for sale I think um, they're being ordered and made right now we will have a base thread set for you if you're interested and of course the pattern okay my buddy in crime is up here looking at me and it's not the cat could I use this as a centerpiece on a table I don't know I don't know and we're gonna have two thread options this is the autumn option and then we have the jewel option. I am having a ball. And so, it was so funny. I didn't know what to do with the cherries. Okay, I shouldn't even be doing this right now. I didn't know what to do with the cherries. And I opened up one of my books and I found this. And I go, bingo, man, we are home. Okay. Okie dokie, 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 dokie. Oh, yeah, Justine. Yeah. Crazy. Go look her up, you guys. Justine Warner. I, 
it's like I almost don't believe it. I almost don't believe it. Those were so incredible. So um, see you Monday. We're going to have a sneak peek of the BOM. I'm under strict orders. Um, think of me dancing to B-52s. <laughs> And yay, we have a we have a Heidi lover who's going to be here. So oh, my children have to be taken care of. Okay, guys, have a good extended weekend. We'll see you Monday. All right, take care. And again, I've given you two great Halloween costumes. <laughs>